Good morning. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and how we apply this existence to our daily lives in this physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. This study is Franklin Graham's Easter message, gives us the perfect example of the Laodicean church. I invite you to watch this short video where Fox uh, News, uh, it says uh, Fox News it, on March 31st on Easter Sunday, uh, interviews Franklin, uh, Reverend Franklin Graham, president of the Samaritan's Purse, to discuss the importance of religion and provides his Easter message amid global tensions. It's uh, quite revealing. I ask you to uh, take the time to watch it. Now, here are just, I just pulled, took two comments from this interview. One commenter writes, the faith in a higher power of God and Jesus. Now, this is why I pulled this comment out, because this is what Franklin Graham drives home several times in his message. There's God and then there's Jesus. Now, of course, they're not stupid. They're not going to say God and then Jesus, but then they do make a clear distinction that there's a God and then there's Jesus. Another viewer writes, Franklin Graham is sharp. Franklin Graham is professional. Franklin Graham shoots straight. Franklin Graham serves others. Franklin Graham is a true Christian. We need more Franklin Grams. Grams, as they wrote. And here's my response. No. First of all, this first viewer who wrote, faith in a higher power of God and Jesus. No, you're worshiping another God. You're lost. This viewer, no, Franklin Graham is not sharp. Uh, I will say this. He is very professional. He does not shoot straight. Yeah, he serves others including those that I'm not at liberty to say who exactly he's serving, but I think we know if it's not Jesus Christ. Uh, Franklin Graham is not a true Christian, and certainly we do not need more Franklin Grahams. So in my response, officially, here I state, Easter, oh, before I start, let me say this. Uh, for those of you who have a very big problem with the E word, and uh, there are those of you who say it won't even, I mean, they're terrified of even using the E word and even deny that it's even in the Bible, but it is in the King James Bible. Uh, yes, I understand that the E word Easter is in the King James Bible because in Acts 12, 4, I mean, come on, we see clearly that this is the day that Her Herod, King Herod had the wicked king had in uh, his observance of the pagan festival of fertility. And this is who Herod held as the uh, ha as a, a high holiday, uh, which is a pagan festival, the spring festival of fertility. Now, we Christians, of course, we observe Jesus Christ as our Passover. We read that and we know in 1 Corinthians 5, 7. So we don't get hung up on holidays, people, but rather we observe the importance of what Resurrection Sunday signifies, right? The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. I don't care. You can call those days Easter. You can call them Resurrection Sunday. Uh, and you can call them uh, the time of recognition of what Jesus did, his death, burial, and resurrection of the cross. It doesn't matter, people. During this dispensation, know this. God does not honor feast days of Judaism. I, I just want to say this as a side note. If this is news to you, 
uh, Amos 521, uh, Jesus specifically states, it is written, I hate and despise your feast days. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. This is God Almighty saying this. This isn't some prophet saying this. Now, God, we know Almighty, the Ancient of Days, that is Jesus Christ himself. Read my studies if you don't understand that. And also in Colossians chapter 2.16, Paul writes, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect to an holy day. And do the research I have. Holy day literally means holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Now, personally, I like, I prefer Resurrection Sunday. However, uh, if you don't, if you don't have a problem using the E word Easter, fine. Uh, but if you do think the word Easter is evil, uh, then hey, fine, don't use it. And if I'm around you and I know it offends you, I won't use the E word. But let me just tell you this: if you're going to be a Pharisee about a word or a day or a festival, uh, please do not use the word Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or even the word Sunday. Uh, The months of the year, January through December, please change those. Don't call them those pagan names. They're all based on pagan deities, demagogues, and other uh, ritual and observances of pagan holy days. I'm not kidding you. Do your research. Also, this is connected. If you're one of these Sabbath keepers, fine. You can observe any day you want as your holy day and and recognizing keeping it as a day of rest. But don't put your Sabbath on me. Uh, Read my study about this. Also, this is connected to the celebration of other holidays. All right. I I just want to get that out of the way. So, In the video here to Franklin Graham, I want to say thank you, Franklin Graham, for giving us a perfect example of the Laodicean church. You see, when Franklin Graham does this interview, this five, six minute interview, what he's doing is he's giving us the perfect example of what the Laodicean church is. And Franklin Graham is one of them. Franklin Graham's statement, he's almost correct about Resurrection Sunday, Easter. But his error about Jesus as the Son of God, notice he does not say the only begotten Son. This is major doctrinal error. And you, if you're in the Laodicean church, you're going to tell me, oh, no, Jesus is the only Son of God. And I'm going to say, oh, no, he's not. He is the only begotten Son do and and you know what it's in this link studies if you're not aware of the significance the doctrinal significance of only begotten versus only son please email me and i'll point it out i'll send you all the links but it's in the link study if you're too lazy to dig it out only begotten literally proclaims that jesus christ is god almighty in the flesh the visible image of god the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Bodily means the only person. Read Colossians chapter 1, 15 and Colossians chapter 2, 9. Now, the Laodicean church of today, they use perverted Bible translations. Those perverted Bible translations will tell you in John three sixteen they won't use only begot, the word begotten. They say, oh, that's an archaic word in the King James Bible. And, uh, And I'm going to tell you, oh, it's a very important word. Uh, See my notes and the prerequisite study notes. It's all in there. Now, this error led Graham into the next major doctrinal error of the Laodicean church, which is the Trinity. He emphatically states of separating the person an actual person identity identity of God being another person in addition to, of course, the second person, which Trinitarians believe, of Jesus Christ. Now, you can see the transcript below. In fact, let me just show you that. I highlighted it here. Um, 
he says, our only hope is God and his son, Jesus. Only God can save us. And that's through his son, Jesus Christ. It says we will look to God, comma, to his son. Now that's getting close to saying they're the same one and the same. But notice where every time he separates, let me show the other ones here. Hold on, here it is. At time 331, hope is God and his son. Now, any a second grader can see here that there's two separate persons here, which is what Trinitarians believe. That's not biblical. And it says, we'll look to God, comma, to his son. Only God can save us, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. Again, we're seeing that separation there. So let me go back. I just want to point that out. Now, in that Trinitarian concept, let me scroll back up here. We see this is purely the Laodicean church of today. Now, Franklin Graham, he finishes his major doctrinal error by not correcting the Fox host about religion. You, you see the Fox host is saying, hey, what's going on? The re- people are walking out of religion, implying that it doesn't matter, all this ecumenism of today. Oh, we've got the mosques or not. People are walking out, seeing a loss of attendance. People got to come back to religion. Well, now, if Graham truly were a man of God, he would have correct him and say, clearly, it's not about religion whatsoever. Uh, but he adds on to here, by then, Graham gives us another gospel. He tells us then his false gospel, now, that what he tells us in his false gospel, well, excuse me, is not the true gospel. Now, I'm going to read the true gospel here. And I want you to compare what I'm telling you is the true gospel in accordance with doctrine in the word of God, King James Bible, and what Graham says. Now, come read and compare. Here it goes. The true gospel. Believe a person must believe that Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Believe in this is what saves us. Now, Graham tells us, scrolling down, scrolling down here. Well, first, as I said, it talks about Easter, but leaves out that Jesus is the only begotten son. And uh, there's nothing in, nothing whatsoever in the gospel about uh, shedding blood, the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. That's for our righteousness. But let's go down here. Uh, He goes in here. He says that God can say only God can save us. Now, compare what I say to what he's saying. Only God can save us through his son, Jesus Christ. That's close. He said, we'll look to God, comma, to his son, again, implying two people and put their faith and trust in him. Now, they're going to put their faith and trust in God. And I guess to his son also. Maybe let's put our faith and trust in both of them. Then he later says, Christ came to save us for our sins, talks about it. That's why we need God. We need to put our faith and trust in him and him alone. Uh Uh-oh. So putting our faith and trust in God, is that the gospel message as written in scripture? Let's go back. First Corinthians chapter 15, one through five, one through four. No, the answer is no, it is not. Next, uh, Graham does not have any comprehension of falling away. He says, well, in time, Scripture says there will be a falling away. No, that falling away in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 and 3, please read my study on that. It's a detailed study. It's very thoroughly done in doctrine of the King James Bible. That's not talking about falling away, spiritual falling away, even though the perverted Bibles say it is. The King James has the word falling away for a purpose. It's in the study. Read it. 
Now, for the prerequisite studies to really understand everything I'm telling you, you must understand doctrine. Doctrine is learning the teaching of the Word of God in the King James Bible. The great teacher is Jesus Christ himself. He is the Word. Every word written in the King James Bible. That's doctrine. False teachers today do not stand in doctrine. They twist it. They add like Graham does, sprinkle little bits and pieces here. Yeah, he uses Jesus, talks about the blood, says God. So read and study doctrine. Also, understand the book of Hebrews and the hook that the false shepherd Jews in Hebrews 10, 25, about forsaking the assembly, about religion. Understand my study. I don't go to church. Read that. Especially because Graham is giving us the perfect example of the Laodicean church today. Read the church of Laodicea today and compare it with the true church of Philadelphia. Please do my study on that. Finally, I want to talk about Franklin Graham himself as a person. And also, he is, he's going to be joining Michael Smith or did join him for that recording. Read my study back in 2020 on the Easter 2020 about uh, the virtual national church. Worship the beast, where Franklin Graham is definitely in there. Read H.R. 5. That's the Equity Act. Read how Franklin Graham is the antithesis to push modern Christians to the Trump Trump Evangelical Coalition. Read my old study here about Franklin Graham and the satanic pedo voodoo donut shop. Finally, the apple does not fall far from the tree. The corrupt fruit of Billy Graham and who Billy Graham, Billy the Goat Graham truly is. Read that study. It may be shocking if you love and worship Billy Graham or did for his passing. Franklin Graham's one of the same people. A must-read book is Billy Graham and His Friends by Dr. By Dr. Kathy Burns. It's an 800-some page book with over 2,000 references. And I mean, this dear woman did her research. She did her thorough research on Billy Graham and all of his associates and acquaintances and how he's connected, all connected in with the Kabbalists, the mystics, the Jesuits, the Catholic Church, the Vatican, they're all connected, the Luciferian global elite, and, that, and Franklin Graham's in there, people. Now, let's talk about this, who is, uh, now before, I really didn't know much until I did started studying the Billy Graham thing years back, I didn't know this Michael Smith. Research him, first of all, he wholeheartedly had endorsed back in 2015, 2016, this very wicked passion Bible. Now, when he was called out for that, he quickly jumped and removed his name because of the backlash. Believe me, he did not get out of that because he was like, oh man, I see the truth. Uh, I see the truth. These per this wicked, wicked, what it's far worse. This passion translation was far worse. Even if you could imagine, well, it's all relative, worse than NIV and ESV, NASB translations. This book, not even calling it a Bible, it's all about ecumenism. And it's been a growing problem in the church for as long as professing evangelicals are becoming prone to join hands with the Roman Catholics, the Mormons, and other apostate sub Christian sects. Now, they all worship their false gospel in unity. Now, this is all in a very detailed study. Read Matt Redman and this Michael W. Smith that joined the gay activists for 9-11 worship event. Now, I didn't write this, but this is in there, the dissenter. Please read that if you really want to see who this Michael Smith really is. And this should say it all here. I'm not going to, this is not about going into Christian contemporary gospel music. If you know anything about this people, please open your eyes. I've done blogs. I'm not going to post the blogs on here. I've exposed several contemporary 
so-called Christian music artists, the lyrics alone are heretical and some, in many cases, even blasphemous. I mean, I'm throwing in there all of the Hillsong garbage and the Amy Grants and the this uh, Chris, Chris Tomlin and all these, oh, oh, they're so wonderful. They're so wonderful. No, they're not. They're all sold out people. They would never, ever be who they are, celebrities or famous, if they were God's children. But the devil takes care of his children, people. Now, I want to close this video out. I showed you an excerpt, and here's the whole video of Franklin Graham's Easter message. Now, over the days, these holy days that we recognize as the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ during Resurrection Sunday this week, this is no coincidence. I did and posted a video and study by my brother in Christ, Cameron Moshvig. The title of Brother Cameron's study is Who is Jesus Christ? Godhead versus Trinity. You can't make this up. Brother Cameron did this study over Resurrection Sunday and from, from the death we celebrate on Friday through the Resurrection Sunday, the week that we hold as observance and remembrance of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Brother Cameron did a video in his whole study. He wrote to me with passion in his heart was, Who's Jesus Christ? That's what we need to talk about when we're talking about Easter or Resurrection Sunday, whatever you want to call it, that time when we observe that. And in knowing Jesus, we have to understand the Godhead. We have to forsake the Trinity, people. I am not going to read through his entire study. Please watch the video and the blog I wrote on that a few days ago. Now, an anonymous subscriber wrote to me in reference to Brother Cameron's wonderful Godhead versus Trinity study, and really, who is Jesus Christ? They write, making the slightest distinction between Jesus Christ and the Father, or this is who I'm sure I think Graham, Franklin Graham is calling the Father. I think that's who he's calling God. Even if just alluded to, no matter how minutely separates Jesus Christ from the Father. In other words, Jesus Christ is being separated from God. Now, let me stop here. Let's scroll down. If you think that I'm being overcritical, what is Graham saying here? Graham is saying right here, right here, we will look to God, comment, to his son. Oh, and then watch. When Christ came to save us, okay, now he changes the subject. That's all we need, God, and we need to put our faith and trust in him and him alone. So he's talking about God. Then he separates very distinctly here. He just separates right here. Let me get here. Our hope is God. And that's not... That's a, that is a cumulative function, people. That means in addition to two persons here and his son, not his begotten son, Jesus Christ. I can't emphasize that enough here. So this subscriber writes, even if this is the most subtle, subtle, no matter how subtle it is, how minutely it, it is, it still separates Jesus Christ from God. Dividing the Godhead into three separate entities, or they say three separate persons, or the real Trinity really states, when you really look at the pagan Trinity, it really states three separate gods, all right, just being honest. But when you divide the Godhead into three separate entities like this, with Jesus Christ as the second 
number two behind the first, it renders Jesus Christ as less divine than the Father, who is perceived as more divine since he stayed up in heaven while his son walked down here on earth. The connection between Moloch and the Trinity is uncanny. Now, read the blog study in the video I did, and Brother Cameron Moshfake points it out. Moloch was Baal worship. That's when people sacrificed their children, literally sacrificed. They had literally in the, put their children to the flame in front of this God. Sacrifice your children. The connection between Moloch and the Trinity is uncanny, and that the Trinity follows the same idea as child sacrifice to what? The Father or God, as the rituals of Moloch present. This is blasphemy of the Godhead, Jesus Christ to the highest degree. This is blasphemy of, of the Godhead, which is Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This is blasphemy to the highest degree. And in the same sense as the unpardonable sin committed by the Pharisees, when it was when they accused Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty, of performing miracles in Satan's name. They write, in the parable of the talents, we may see a type of the Trinitarian and the wicked servant who viewed his Lord as a hard man. Who wouldn't see God the same way as a hard man if he required his son's death to be pacified? In other words, before God can be pacified, he had to see his son's death. The Trinitarian has no concept of the redemptive work of Christ. I'll close here. Thank you, Lord. May this work be given for your glory. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha. <music>